Uh, hi. 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 Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about Ruby 4, probably. Like, I might be the only, only one talking about Ruby 4 in this conference. It is still uh, 3.1 is the latest. But I'm going to talk about that. Uh, in case you don't know me, I go by Kokeven, zero instead of or, and I joined Shopify late July this year. Um, I'm still new to JIT, kind of, although I, I've talked about JIT for five years or so, like, so I'm not, but uh, I joined the YJIT team. I'm focusing on YJIT instead of like other series stuff. Like, including Emigit, actually. I'm going to talk about Emigit as well in this talk, but Emigit is not my work so far. And I'm also a maintainer of Hamo template engine and also ERB, the default template engine for Ruby. And those kinds of um, non white work has been sponsored by those GitHub sponsors, so thank you for those GitHub sponsors. And a little bit of announcement. Uh, I kind of replaced the Hamo 5 with Hamlet, so like, Hamlet is I, the template engine I talked about in Ruby Kaigi 2015, like seven years ago, and finally it made it to be the uh, default implementation of Hamo. Like Hamo 5 and Hamo 6 are completely different. It's uh, free scratch. And also, if you notice, uh, this benchmark is comparing Hamo, ERB, and uh, Slim. And uh, if you are still still using Slim, it's the slowest template engine. So like, please switch to Hamo, because <laughs> that's faster. Anyway, um, so JIT. Um, so uh, I'm, I don't expect all of you to like, have an experience in writing JIT, so I'm going to explain how that works, basically. So the basics is you have a Ruby method like this, and uh, usually uh, the interpreter comp compile, like, I mean, passes the Ruby source to abstract syntax tree, like a tree like this. However, traversing this tree all the time is slow, so that's compiled to more sequential code like this. And uh, you don't need to read this, but this uh, put, put object, put object, and uh, one and two are popped, uh, pushed into on the stack, and then opt plus instruction pops the two operands on the stacks, and uh, that's plus, they add in, add in two different numbers, and then pushes three to the stack, and then we will return three to the caller of the method. So that's basically how virtual machine works. That's how Koichi built Ruby. Uh, but these days, we are doing somewhat different thing. For uh, optimizing that further, we are, uh, instead of like virtually uh, emulating the machine behavior by those kind of uh, the virtual machine Ruby specific instructions, we are generating the uh, machine specific uh, machine code. Uh, this is the ARM example uh, generated by the uh, YG, I think, yeah. And um, so, like the put object and opt plus lib thing is a so-called instruction sequence. This is also something uh, named by Koichi. Um, we, so like other compiler developers are calling that as bytecode, but because that's not a one byte, one byte, but instead we are doing the word, 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 so we are not calling it bytecode instead, and then we are calling it instruction sequence. So the baseline of the JIT compiler is always instruction sequence, and you can also dump the uh, instruction sequence by using the dsmsm uh, method. I'm kind of impressed when I see this instruction, because like, uh, if you look at this, you are, like, really, like, it's going to be very easy for you to optimize that Ruby code you write. Like, uh, whenever I optimize that template engine, I look at this all the time, because that's very helpful for you to optimize your Ruby code. But now, instead of asking you to look at this this awesome all the time, I want you to to, like stop worrying about this because uh, it's kind of hard. So like uh, I want you to focus on writing beautiful Ruby code instead of uh, doing this aggregate stuff. So uh, JIT compiler will take care of this kind of thing instead of you, and then you will be like spending happy time with Ruby. So that's the kind of point of the Ruby JIT. And then uh, CDB currently has two different JIT compilers. Uh, first one is uh, MJIT. Uh, that was merged into uh, Ruby 2.6 first. And then we also have the other YGIT, uh, JIT compiler called YJIT. Yeah, you maybe uh, like listen to the 
the YG talk today. So those are the two different uh, JIT compilers. And uh, you can also dump the implementation like this. Uh, so MJIT generates C code, and then uh, there's an option to like dump the C code path, and then uh, this dumps the C, uh, C, uh, C code. And then YGIT also has an instruction, uh, the option to uh, dump the instructions, and this is what I actually implemented. And so please use that for learning how YGIT works. And for comparing the uh, performance, uh, we have a benchmark suite called YGIT Bench. And uh, this is the uh, head, so-called headlining benchmarks. And those are the real world and also like uh, that makes money kind of benchmarks. So like uh, these include uh, things like Rails Bench. By the way, that's, uh, Rails Bench is also what I maintain. But uh, th this, this is currently kind of not doing the warm up in the same way as I designed. So it's not friendly to MGIT. So like MGIT is not speeding up. But if I tune this kind of thing, um, it's going to be uh, basically 5% is faster than the baseline. So MGIT optimizes Rails, but uh, currently not, not much optimized well for YGIT. Um, the other kinds of categories of benchmarks is uh, this other benchmarks category, and that includes uh, everyone's favorite opt carrot, that is the uh, NES emulator. And um, the <laughs> MGIT is known for optimizing opt carrot well, so like, uh, MGIT was merged because opt carrot is become, becomes faster by MGIT, but uh, all other benchmarks <laughs> are actually currently not really performing well. But anyway, that's how like, that's currently working. And um, Dash dash JIT has been the option to enable MJIT, but um, from 3.1, uh, there's uh, YJIT as well. And then because uh, YJIT has been better maintained by, compared to the MJIT I, I'm, where I'm the only maintainer, uh, I asked or like, suggested to make dash dash JIT the uh, option to choose uh, YJIT instead of MJIT. So in 3.1, uh, dash dash JIT will um, enable YJIT. So if you want to try out YJIT, uh, you can use just uh, y dash dash JIT in 3.1. However, because uh, YJIT was rewritten in Rust in 3.2, uh, from 3.2 and forward, uh, that's going to be kind of like, tricky, because if you don't enable YJIT, uh, dash dash JIT will use MJIT. And then if you don't, uh, if you enable YJIT, then that's, that's going to use YJIT. So kind of complicated. So I kind of personally, at this point, I always use dash dash MJIT or dash dash YJIT. But anyway, that's the option to enable that. And the state of the JIT compilers are like, uh, YJIT has the, uh, so 3.1, the latest version of release Ruby, has only the Intel support, but, and then also we don't uh, garbage collect the uh, unused code. Uh, so like it's going to only just grow the code space. But uh, in this current uh, 3.2 development, we are hoping to implement CodeGC. That's currently actually not started yet, but we hope to do that in this uh, three more months. And then uh, M the, on the other hand, MJIT has been there for a while. And I've been the, actually almost the only maintainer of that, although we got some like, contributions from other virtual machine maintainers. Anyway, um, it's been like, there for a while. So it's stable ish and also portable. Like, uh, the reason why when YGIT was uh, introduced and then uh, MGIT wasn't removed is because some committers said because MGIT is more portable, <laughs> uh, they kind of wanted to keep it. But uh, in 3.2, what's happening is I'm kind of changing the architecture. Like, uh, 3.1 was using pthread to uh, execute, uh, run the MGIT thread uh, parity to uh, avoid blocking the Ruby main thread. But then 3.2 is changed so that um, I can just write MGT in Ruby. So uh, 3. from 3.2, MGT is rewritten in Ruby. Uh, I actually merged the Ruby rewrite, rewrite patch uh, this Sunday, like two days ago, <laughs> and so uh, three days ago. So like, uh, it's still very experimental. Like, uh, I, I think I broke everything. <laughs> so please don't use that in production yet. But yeah, I mean, so uh, uh, that architecture was changed to use the fork to uh, spawn the reprocess, and then that will uh, be able to implement that JIT compiler logic in Ruby. So that's uh, easy for me to work on that. And so hopefully, I can implement more sophisticated uh, algorithm to optimize the uh, Ruby code. And then to handle the uh, 
exit of this child process, I'm using signal, sig child to uh, notify the uh, Ruby interpreter to uh, use the JIT code. So that's the current uh, architecture. And the uh, important thing is, because MJT is written in Ruby now like this, uh, you have some library to do a very weird stuff. Like, if you look at the Isaac encoded equal whatever, uh, you can do the byte code whatever monkey patch. So if you look at the uh, upper left circle, uh, it's a uh, a, so this is a def A, Neo, so it's supposed to return Neo, but if you modify the bytecode like this, uh, that will return the self, the main object, so uh, you can do bytecode or monkey patch from 3.2. So it's a secret feature <laughs> in 3.2. I'm kind of excited, but uh, if you are using, like, if you're using trace point for weird stuff, maybe you might be excited about this, but uh, I might be actually the only person that I said, but anyway, so. You can now monkey patch JIT compiler, so it's kind of fun, right? So, uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of saying uh, bring your own JIT because you can monkey patch JIT compiler to hook your own JIT compiler into this uh, MJIT implementation. So that's fun. Um, so to, uh, because I implemented or authored uh, JIT compiler in the past, which was presented in uh, Ruby Kaigi 2017, editor RV, that is an uh, NVM based JIT compiler. I authored that as a gem in that is kind of integrated into a forked Ruby, but uh, because there was no uh, JIT compiler in that master branch uh, at that point, uh, we weren't able to integrate that naturally without forking the Ruby interpreter, but now we have all the implementation needed to to integrate external JIT compiler. So um, we can now we can now think about this kind of uh, JIT plug interface, like JVM. JVM has a grow as a, a, a sort of like had an external grow as a JIT compiler, but uh, now you can integrate any JIT compiler using this interface. So the proposed or actually I already mer merged it as an like experimental feature or development uh, debugging feature, but I mean uh, that was uh, merged like a dash dash is equal pose to start MJIT uh, or enable MJIT without actually starting the image worker, and then while the worker is still paused, you can uh, redefine the, or override or monkey patch the uh, compiler implementation, and then uh, call the resume method to uh, start, actually start the uh, image worker or like uh, the implementation you implemented. So that way, uh, you can override the JIT compiler, and then uh, that works like this. So the fix is, uh, uh, Pure Ruby assembler written by uh, Aaron Patterson to do the JIT compiler, I mean, the assembly JIT compilation like this, and then Ruby DSO can generate the machine code, and then if you return the address of the uh, machine code, uh, now the MJIT, once the regime is started, so this example is uh, the test method is, was originally false, but then once the JIT compiler overrides that to a true returning method, uh, once the second method is, like, that was called second time, uh, it's gonna be returned Turning two instead of four, so like uh, this is like you, you can hook the JIT compiler, but like, like this, and then uh, this is how you can implement JIT compiler like YJIT. But if you want, if you are interested in generating C code like MJIT, you can also do this because like uh, obviously this is a Ruby based implementation. So uh, instead of Ruby VM uh, MJIT uh, compile, uh, this version could be uh, Ruby VM MJIT uh, compiler uh, compile. So then you can. I override the MJT implementation if you're interested. And um, because this is not an official feature and just an experimental thing, you always need to do the const get to do the <laughs> private <laughs> constant reference. Uh, of course, I don't intend to uh, maintain this backend compatibility, so uh, it's always going to be the private. But um, JIT compiler is always tightly coupled to the uh, specific Ruby version, so even if it's not workload compatible, actually, I think that doesn't really matter. So uh, no compatibility is the best thing you can get about developing JIT compiler, so that's, I think, fine. Um, so also, just one more information. Um, MJIT has the, so because MJIT is implementing like uh, translating C to a machine code uh, for some uh, non-optimized instructions, uh, we also have the library that has the uh, actual C code for virtual machine implementation. So if you want to, for example, use LLVM to parse the C code and kind of do optimization with it, you can do that with this um, constant. 
And now everyone is writing CVG, if you notice. Like, there are two other non master, master merge JIT compiler talk in this Ruby Kaigi. And also, uh, ten, uh, Aaron Patterson writes a JIT compiler within Ruby. And I, in the past, wrote the uh, LVM based JIT compiler. So uh, you are the only person not writing JIT if you're not. Um, like, uh, JIT compiler kaite hen no omae dake ということ desu ne. Hai. 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 De. じゃあ、まあ、皆さんが、まあ、ジットコンパイルをこの話を聞いて書きましたと。で、じゃあ、<笑>それをどうベンチャークするかっていう話をしたいと思うんですけど、えっと、まあ、その、まあ、僕が別にショッピングから来てるから、これを反証してるわけじゃなくて、えっと、あ、あ、やばい、日本語で、あ、すみません、あ、I talked in... あ<laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I switched to Japanese without even noticing. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm not talking about this because I'm from Shopify, but this watch bench is a very great um, benchmark. Um, this, is, this has uh, three different categories of benchmark. So uh, this is a watch bench, uh, bench and an image of uh, bench. And uh, the three categories. So the first category is a headering benchmarks. If you open the uh, speed.wajit.org, that will show up the uh, six different benchmarks that include active record and the uh, PDF um, and the mail. And uh, Liquid is the Shopify's author uh, template engine for uh, updating the Shopify's uh, storefront. And then uh, Site Road is the uh, YAML and Rails bench. So all of them are re kind of related to the Shopify's Rails application and also so, sort of represent the uh, real world Workload. And um, there are, are different categories for uh, non micro benchmarks still, like uh, uh, opt carrot and also the go, uh, like uh, algorithm, and then like a uh, routing uh, simulator. And those kind of things are also non micro benchmarks, actually real uh, Ruby code. But the difference between the first category and the second category is the, the first category make money and then th these don't. So <laughs> even if this becomes faster, you're not uh, like uh, funded to work on that optimization. So it's important to focus on the first one because otherwise you will lose money. <laughs> but then this is also like kind of interesting because that's a real world application as well. The last category is the uh, micro benchmark. Uh, you, uh, this is kind of like a test case for YJ. Like uh, uh, 30,000 fails is sort of a stress test for YJ. And then it's really bad, to, very bad, bad for MJ, but that doesn't mean uh, MJ is performing, not performing well because it's just kind of like a test case for the uh, YJ internal. So uh, these are sort of like, if you look at the uh, YJ benchmark result, um, the most important ones are the headering benchmarks and then uh, other benchmarks if you are like, interested in the real world work, work performance. <sighs> and uh, uh, so to use this, I introduced, um, introduced a new uh, option called dash E. So uh, I also authored uh, the benchmark uh, driver gem in the past. That is also a kind of benchmarker uh, that also has the dash E option to specify the uh, Ruby interpreter. And so uh, you can uh, run any benchmark, uh, any Ruby implementation, like Truffle Ruby, JRuby, whatever can be used with widget bench. So it's useful for uh, measuring your own Ruby implementation. And you are free to write your own JIT and measure that with YJIT bench. So finally, we are talking about Ruby 4. My wish on Ruby 4 JIT is like, I want Ruby to be as fast as Java or JavaScript. The reason why I'm choosing those two languages is because Java and J JavaScript are also running on uh, VM, like uh, J Java runs on JVM and uh, JavaScript runs on uh, V8. So uh, kind of like, I think making it as fast as those languages could be kind of possible for me. So like, um, that's why I'm choosing this. And uh, another reason to like, to, per, like aim for this is uh, kind of these days, Python seems like the most, almost most popular scripting language. But if the, the, the shortcoming on Python is kind of still slow. So like if Ruby is as fast as those two languages, I think people could be persuaded to switch to uh, Ruby possibly. So, and um, 
And the state is like this. So there is a benchmark uh, website that's comparing two different languages. And uh, Java and Node are obviously faster than Ruby and Python. And then uh, if you look at this table, uh, you might think uh, Ruby is sort of in the same category as Python, although that's uh, still significantly faster than Python. By the way, this is all the widget numbers. So uh, we are trying to make widget almost 10 times faster <laughs> to reach the Java performance. So that's what I want, actually, by the way. Um, and to see more uh, interesting things, because th those are like uh, the virtual things for like comparing different languages, uh, there was um, a very impressive talk by Evan Phoenix in uh, Ruby Kaigi 2015. That was about uh, Ruby uh, 3.3, because that was the thing uh, announced by Matt that year. And um, the, there was a so-called canary code. Uh, you can see that j j your JIT implementation is good enough if this can be just an immediate uh, one returned by this method. Um, and by the way, because um, Endos implemented the optimization in Vim level to uh, specially implement, uh, optimize the uh, array min and max. It's kind of now easier to deal with it. So I'm proposing a little bit different version of this canary code that is to call the include method uh, that doesn't have the opt, opt instance. So it's kind of harder. Uh, you don't, you, you're not supposed to implement a ex, yet another virtual machine implementation to cheat with it. But um, this is sort of more real example because because uh, I often do if one equal equal one and then or, or uh, two equal equal one to uh, then to shortcut that implementation, you can use the array in Q to do this. So I think this is kind of a real world example. And uh, another variant is uh, uh, those were the uh, methods. So like one and two often don't change much. So you can inline and assume that uh, that don't often change. But uh, variables instead, like uh, instance variables and local variables change often. So uh, those things shouldn't be inline. So two different variants. Uh, although uh, the, the important in interesting thing is, is um, there's a talk about uh, object shapes tomorrow. And then uh, if you do that, uh, instance variable um, checking could be uh, optimized. And the local variable could also be uh, optimized by using the latest allocation. So those kinds of things could be tested by this variant. And uh, another uh, interesting code could be, uh, there was an MG talk back in 2017, and that was a, a while loop, and re that re should return the result without even looping anything. And that is sort of uh, kind of easy for MG because uh, what GCC can take care of it, but the more interesting example could be this. So, if you are familiar with uh, Ruby virtual machine, this could be a hell for <laughs> you to optimize. Like, uh, you need to inline the C method. Uh, H is a C method. So you need to inline C code from the Ruby. And then uh, C code will call RB fun code to uh, call, call the block for incrementing the total. And then uh, that's pretty hard to inline. So that's more, I think, interesting uh, example. So how can we do that, do, do that kind of really uh, weird or like complicated optimizations. Um, so from this point, I'm going to like show you the challenges to for the Ruby for JIT compilers. Um, those are all the um, Ruby, normal Ruby features you should be using all the time. So uh, once those features are optimized well, I think you're going to be able to see the real world application performance increase. So um, some, of the, some of them are implemented in MJIT, and some of them are implemented in YJIT, and uh, not all of them are implemented in YJIT, uh, both implementations. So uh, for, and if you are writing your own uh, JIT compiler, uh, that's going to be, that's gonna be interesting for, to support all of these uh, things. So I'm going to present those challenges. The first, the most, I think, simple case could be uh, constants. So if there is a constant accessing like a one, uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't want you to read this, but I, I just want you to think uh, virtual machine implementation is too complex so that, that it's slow. And then uh, this is currently checking the inline cache, and then that's returning inline cache, but that always requires the memory access to read the operand. But uh, in JIT compiler, because you can, uh, you don't need to specialize your, uh, you don't need, yeah, you don't need to uh, generalize your instruction to deal with any method. You can just inline the things like this. So like uh, in the constant the reference, you can just inline the one in this uh, method uh, JIT code, and then uh, this could be uh, implemented like this. And uh, to optimize this further, uh, if you look at this method, you don't want to uh, check this uh, thing. So you could 
do something like this. When the constant is somehow redefined, you, you invalidate the code. By the way, this is sort of hand waving Ruby code to explain things, but that, um, that doesn't mean that uh, I, I think this is going to work like this. I mean, anyway, so uh, you can uh, discard the one JIT, uh, one JIT method but once the constant is redefined. So how that could be, that's how that the con constant could be. Uh, Optimized, but this is not really interesting at this point. But the more interesting thing is, if you have things like this, like one plus two, uh, this could be obviously returning three, and so we want to do that. And then what we could do is first we can do this kind of uh, two different checks, and then uh, we can merge this, and so that's better. And then finally uh, we can do this again to just return three. So that's how we the constants could be optimized. Um, MJIT currently does something like. Uh, they, I mean, not, yeah, this one. So, like, uh, checks are, are inserted, but that could be at least merged. And then uh, we could do something like this if we have some uh, sophisticated way to de optimize the uh, implementation. Another interesting case is uh, local variables. Uh, I think you obviously use local variables all the time, so it's very important. Um, local variables currently use the virtual machine stack to store the uh, local variable. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's obvious. Anyway, um, so if you uh, define the local variable one, uh, that's going to be uh, pushed to the virtual machine stack, and then uh, not pushed, but anyway, uh, that's inserted to virtual machine stack. And so you always have to refer to the local variable, but uh, because of how machine is uh, created, uh, you're using registers faster for accessing local variable. So uh, if you can do something like this, it's going to be faster. But the problem is Ruby is so dynamic that we have very weird features like this. So binding local variable get is inserted, then uh, it's really hard. So like uh, when we have a C function call, first of all, we have to, uh, when that's a, a call or save registers, you need to uh, save the register first, and then uh, that's going to be uh, popped again. But um, even if you do that, um, this uh, for C function, uh, like a, a binding local variable get, uh, it's going to be impossible for the method to inspect the local variable. So we have to do something like this. Um, we have to look at the native stack and then uh, the pop to uh, push, push to the machine stack. The value needs to be uh, rolled back to the virtual machine stack and then uh, that needs to be de-optimized again to uh, look at the, uh, the compiler, uh, the, sorry, the register allocated values. Our example is an instance variable. So uh, if we have an instance variable like this, uh, it's going to be uh, something like this. So again, I'm not intending, like, I, want that. I don't want you to read this, but uh, it's, it could be optimized like this. And then uh, it's currently uh, looking at the heap. Uh, this example is looking at the heap. And then uh, the some checks are added. So like, uh, obviously, when you are modifying the instance variable, you need to check the, if the object is frozen or not. And so that's inserted. And then you also need to check the class to see the uh, index. And so uh, those things are kind of shareable across different uh, instructions if you are JIT in that implementation. So um, this is uh, how checks could be uh, merged. But this is also already implemented by MJIT. Uh, but um, what we, we want to do is something like this. So there were uh, three different checks in this current implementation, but we want to only check one thing to make sure everything uh, like this. So uh, you can encode the multiple things like a frozen and instance variable index in a single thing and then compare just one word together and then you can be uh, faster than the creditation. And uh, actually, we had a pretty good uh, keynote talking about that last year. And we also have uh, another talk uh, about the progress next, uh, tomorrow. So uh, please go to that talk about if you're very interested in the detail. And uh, another more complicated thing is uh, method calls. So we have something like this now. So again, I'm not, I don't want you to read this, but um, it's something like this. So like if you, you need to push the stack frame and then uh, call the cache uh, implementation and then pop that, but um, it's kind of slow. So uh, MGT implemented the in method inlining that uh, skips the uh, stack frame push and pop if the method is uh, thought to be a pure. And then uh, we can also do uh, inlining data like this. So like one is the obviously returning one. So we can uh, insert one if as long as we are checking this kind of thing. And so we are doing this. And uh, in, in MJIT, we are doing this kind of thing uh, for a simple case like uh, one. And then further, we could also uh, skip the cache reference uh, if you are do, doing the de-optimization trick. And so that's the uh, method calls. Uh, 
we have other challenges like code recovery for image and uh, method in learning C Ruby. That, that's what I talked about in the MVH. And also, uh, we could also use the more registers for method arguments and uh, the optimization on other things. And finally, there's a garbage collection. Um, we, you always, I think, uh, use the uh, object allocation all the time for Ruby because that's an object-oriented language. And then we are currently using the malloc to do the uh, allocation. And then to reserve the heap object slot, we need to call the GC start or like a GC all the time for heap allocation. But if we are not doing heap allocation but doing the stack allocation, uh, we can skip the GC part. So you can skip the GC call and so it's going to be faster. And then if you are also like, kind of like wise enough to do the uh, scalar, so-called uh, scalar re replacement, uh, you can skip that. And then uh, even stack aggregation is not needed. And then just use a register for doing the same kind of thing. So um, uh, next step is like uh, write your own JIT and then optimize that and measure that with a uh, pen. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>